Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your new Bonner Private Wine video, your infinite source of wine information, education, and of course, wine tasting pleasure with our delicious wine selections from the club. You know, wine is extremely diverse in taste, right, and flavors. We discuss it all the time here on this channel. You know also that it can have many different colors, red, white, rosé, pink, purple, almost black. We've talked about blue wine here before, yes, and even I made a video for you about the trendy orange wine. Well, today I want to tell you about green wine, yes, or how the world of wine is getting greener every day. Do you know that wineries even today are already having to adapt to climate change? Let's explain. <laughs> As you probably know, agriculture used to be quite wasteful just a few decades ago, and it was particularly the case for viticulture and winemaking. Wine has always had an image of a fairly natural product, and in all fairness, it kind of was compared to many processed foods or beverages sold throughout the 1980s, the 90s, the 2000s. But behind the scene, vineyards and wineries weren't that eco-friendly. Just as a telling example, when I was studying winemaking and viticulture at university in France some 20 years ago, we were taught that viticulture, grape growing, despite covering about only 10%, I think it was, of the land used in agriculture in France, was using about half of the pesticides and other chemicals farmers used to crop food produce around the country. Growers could afford to spend that much because grapes are a valuable crop and wine can be quite expensive and because vines are quite fragile, fragile uh, and they get attacked by many diseases. But now this is all rapidly changing, regulations are evolving, consumers demand a greener products indeed, and growers realize they are better off respecting their land more, including because it often makes better wine. So let's discuss 10 ways wineries and vine growers use to make their wine greener and better. If you walked through vineyards 20 years ago, most used to look like dry earth with vine rows on top of it. Now, you'll often see lavish grass and various species of plants between the rows, especially through winter and spring, often even flowers. These are beautiful. Those are called cover crops. You might even notice uh, that m there are more hedges as well around the vineyards, also planted with a variety of species, beautiful flowers too sometimes, and that's because biodiversity around the vines allows the hosting of various insects and animals that prey on vine pests and naturally help vineyards remain healthy. Cover crops are better also than having to kill all the weeds uh, with herbicides. They're pretty, it makes us happy and nature happy as well. And some say the grapes that you produce that may have more flavors too are also better, so you end up with better wine. All those scents of flowers around the vineyards, well, they help. Spraying vines is more often than not necessary, a protection against all sorts of pests, fungi and insects that compromise grape quality and yield, but spraying is pretty bad. It introduces chemicals in the environments, it kills the natural biodiversity, including those good insects and microorganisms, it destroys if you wish the natural balance, it burns quite a lot of diesel too, uh, so it's expensive. The less you spray, the better. 
With technology, with accurate surveillance and tracking of exactly when in the growing season a particular pest arrives in an area, growers now have intelligence networks of data and information, a collaborative approach known as an integrated pest management IPM that allows them to spray much less now only when absolutely necessary. And when you do have to spray, many choose to do so using organic products that are less chemical and friendlier to the environment like using sulfur or copper or other alternative natural products. What's called the principle of biodynamics even go as far as spraying plants like chamomile extracts or needles. Nettles. Nettles, not needles. <laughs> Times when vine growers used to spray their soils with nitrates and other sorts of chemical minerals are virtually over, at least in the more advanced wine countries. Those end up in our drinking water uh, and it's absolutely terrible. Instead, healthy soils that are full of nutrients are obtained using natural animal manures incorporated into the soils. Also, if you plow uh, those cover crops that we talked about before into the soil in spring, you also introduce more nutrients, the worms and life are back into the soils, life that in turn fee feeds uh, the vines. And again, most growers know uh, that you make better wines this way, much better than spraying all sorts of chemicals on the soil. So that's a strong incentive to subscribe to those practices. And when your soils are healthier, you want your vines to get their water and nutrients from those healthy soils rather than just from drips from irrigation. You can encourage vines to dig deep and get their root systems down where is the underground water, the plowing helps here as well. And you use less watering, less irrigation. Wineries also used to waste tons of water uh, for cleaning the winery, cleaning the tanks, the winemaking and bottling equipment, etc. Now most wineries closely monitor how and where exactly they use their water and they have precise water conservation programs. And there are tons of sustainable viticulture or organic viticulture or biodynamic viticulture certifications now too. Those help not only certify producers comply with certain rules, which in itself is pretty good, but more importantly it helps them educate their staff, optimize and control their processes better because they have to look at it really closely and precisely and uh, rather than doing things out of bad habits, they do things to the book, by the book, and it's a lot better. It's a self-imposed discipline, but often valued by consumers as well. You can put this little sticker and it's a good thing. Bigger, heavier, thicker glass bottles often give a more premium feel to a bottle of wine. Traditionally, only expensive wines had big heavy bottles because a dollar or two worth of additional glass put into the container doesn't matter to a $100 bottle. So you might as well throw all the expensive packaging in the world to make it look expensive. The problem is, you've made all these efforts in the vineyard to be eco-friendly and you dump it all out of the window by having to ship or freight and fly all this unnecessary glass around the globe burning fossil fuel. So more and more wineries are more careful now. As a consumer, remember that the weight of the bottle is not what makes a wine taste good. So, Many wineries have understood that and they go with thinner glass even though it doesn't feel maybe as good or premium but 
What matters is the wine inside. This one is a fairly easy one. When you're in a sunny area where vineyards are generally located, well, it's quite easy to stick a few solar panels onto the roof. Winery workers only operate during the day, so you can match the power production. And most of the cellar cooling and air conditioning is only necessary in summer when there's plenty of sun. So it's profitable and eco-friendly. So wineries might as well, and they do. Yes, climate change poses significant challenges to viticulture and sustainable practices include strategies to adapt. Looking towards the future, it takes a lot of time to establish a vineyard or change a vineyard, so it's necessary. You can select drought-resistant grape varieties, for example, in an area that used to grow more Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon or even Pinot Noir, for example. You can plant grapes that are more from the south of France, for example, like Grenache or Carignan, that don't need quite as much water. And they enjoy more heat as well. So vineyard layouts can also help reduce the impact of extreme weather events. You can lay out your vineyards a bit better or implementing those water saving measures that we previously discussed. And sustainable viticulture often extends beyond environmental concerns as vineyards and wineries are generally located in rural areas or less populated areas and they represent a significant part of the local economy. In those regions, fair labor practices and engagement in the community helps wineries and vine growers secure hands, people to do all of the hard work that is involved in making wine. So better workers also make better wines. That's for sure, it's proven. We're not just assembling cars or machines here we're making a divine beverage. And here you have it. I wanted to make this video to show you how deep and how far reaching what appears to be a small change in how producers make their wine, how they just approach the way they make their wine, a small shift, how much of an impact making a wine more environmentally friendly can have. Making green wine or greener wine, I should say, is not just a gimmick. It's not just a way for a winery to say, my wine is respectful of the environment. As a matter of fact, a bottle of wine is the product of a fairly large surface of earth. You need a big piece of land to make a bottle of wine and a lot of people are involved in its production. So a small change in how you approach the production of this bottle can indeed have a very significant impact on the environment and the community. Most producers are aware of this and that's why they're often really keen to engage in this process and wine, why wine gets indeed greener every day. If you enjoyed this video, share it with somebody you think might be interested. It helps us grow the channel and make more videos uh, like this for you. So don't feel free to share it uh, broadly. We appreciate it. Take care and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Cheers.